Hi, Green Ridge. Pastor Brendan here. Uh, time for another Music Monday. And uh, today we're doing a song that we just introduced yesterday uh, as we begin Second Peter. And the song is going to serve really as a theme for Second Peter, Jesus' Firm Foundation. Now, you may have noticed that the lyrics were probably very familiar to you. They borrow, all the verses are, are mainly borrowed from the song, How Firm a Foundation, which is a great hymn that's been sang for hundreds of years. And uh, I think we've actually talked about that on my on Music Monday. Um, but there's a lot of things that I really like about this song, some, some changes that they made that I think give it um, some, some freshness, but also some great focus to it as well. So let's dive right into it. Um, really, the, the center of this, I believe, comes right out of 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 4, when it says, They will say, Where is the promise of His coming? This is what the, the false teachers that we're going to be hearing about. This is what they say to people. Where is the promise of His coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the very beginning. Um, people asking, where is his coming? Where, where is this? And the response is, we have a firm foundation in Christ. We have a uh, wonderful truth that we can, we can trust with that. We have exceedingly great promises that we can cling to. When we are challenged by the world, wondering, is Christ even really come, returning? And, trust, and, and doubting all of God's word, what it says, we can respond saying, cling to his many great and precious promises. Now, one thing that you'll see throughout, unlike um, how firm a foundation, which is really quoting scripture and a lot of the verses from the perspective of God speaking those promises to us, they've actually changed the words, the wording here to where we are encouraging each other. We are bragging on the Lord, declaring his promises to one another as we go through. So let's start with verse one here. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Uh, setting off the just the entire premise that uh, just what a firm foundation that we have that's been laid for us in, in his very word. And there's not other things that we need to cling to. You know, one of the one of the sad things that the church has been deceived by, really, is this idea that we need to cling to these cute little catchphrases, these great little um, slogans, these great little punchlines, and that somehow those things are more encouraging than what God's word actually says. Um, you know, there's going to be a, a funeral tomorrow tomorrow and I'm, I'm very excited to, to be a part of it and, and serve in it and I've, I've served in, in many funerals uh, here for Green Ridge with other churches with my own family members and it's always a little heartbreaking just to hear people sharing all these sweet little sentimental statements of things um, that, that are happening and, and those things just pale in comparison to the wonderful glorious truths that we have in God's word especially for a saint. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. And so let's cling to those promises. What more can we say than God's very word? You know, 1 Corinthians 3.11 tells us within that, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, which is Jesus Christ himself. And that is, you know, this this story, this song is not just focusing on the foundation of the promises that we have in God's word, God's word being the foundation, but that Jesus Christ himself, who John calls the word of God, um, Jesus Christ himself is that firm foundation. All these promises are fulfilled in him. He is the yes and amen to each of those promises. So let's look at verse two here. Fear not, he is with us. Oh, be not dismayed, for he is our God, our sustainer and strength. He'll be our defender and cause us to stand, upheld by his righteous by his merciful almighty hand. These are almost taken word for word out of Isaiah 41:10. Fear not, for I am with you, but be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, this um Isaiah speaking these things on behalf of the Lord, you know, that was Israel's problem so much was they wanted really to have their own clout. 
They wanted to count their armies. They wanted to be known throughout the world. Don't mess with us. And and that was true in some sense because they had the Lord on their side. And it was a statement about the Lord of, you know, hey, we are God's people. Cower before the Lord. But Israel got it mixed up. And they wanted to stand with the Lord and say, hey, don't mess with us because we're Israel. Yeah, the Lord's with us, but don't mess with us because we're Israel and we're strong on our own anyway. God is saying, I will strengthen you. I will help you. You don't need a kingdom with armies, many horses, many chariots. And let's be honest, church, we fall into that same trap, don't we? We want to be recognized, respected. We want um, in the political arena, our voices to be heard. We want in the debate, intellectual Um, philosophical arena, our voices to be heard. We don't want people talking down to us. But the Lord says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. Don't be afraid of those things. Don't need to feel like you need to puff yourself up or prove yourself or anything like that. I will be with you. Then it breaks into this wonderful chorus. This uh, incredible thing that I, I just love this idea of us singing this to each other reminding each other just our minds being blown about what a great foundation that we have so it says how firm our foundation how sure our salvation and we will not be shaken jesus firm foundation you know this is taken out of a couple places in scripture that i really love you know first of all second timothy 2 19 but god's firm foundation stands bearing this seal The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Paul's telling to Timothy that this is a firm foundation, and it stands. The Lord knows who are his. And so we don't need to be worried about that. There is a a firm foundation. Our salvation is sure because the God knows who belongs to him. He he is not going to forget it. He's not unaware of it. He knows. Uh, Paul also says something similar to Titus. Titus chapter 1 verse 9, he says, He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, as so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also rebuke those who contradict it. Um, and so cling, cling tight to the word of God. It is, it is a firm foundation that we have. It's trustworthy. And then, that last part about not being shaken, Jesus being our firm foundation, Hebrews chapter 12 um, really gives us uh, a great summation of that. Chapter 12, verse 26, it says, at, at that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. What a great command, encouragement that we are given by the author of Hebrews here. Um, Just just a a wonderfully rich rich reminder, something that can ground us so greatly. And, And we sing it in these words. This is the subtext behind these words. And we shall not be shaken. Jesus, firm foundation. We being... uh, those who've been born again, awakened to the truth of God, we are part of that kingdom, that inheritance that he will receive every nation, every tribe, every tongue. And that kingdom cannot be shaken, as it says. So let's offer to God that acceptable worship, which is what we're doing as we sing as we sing this song, granted that our hearts are in tune with it. Let's look at verse 3. Verse 3, that soul that is trusting in Jesus as Lord will press on, enduring the darkest of storm. And though even hell should endeavor to shake, he'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Um, You know, what a great encouragement that we have. Um, You know, within the doctrines of grace, you have the the perseverance of the saints, that, that the saints, those who have been born again, will persevere on. They will continue on. They will not fall away. God will hold them fast. And, um, you know, it makes me think of Romans 8. 38 through 39, uh, an incredible, incredible just kind of um, 
outpouring of worship from, from Paul as he is going through laying out the gospel. He says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. They will press on enduring. You know, and as we think through um, Second Peter, if you've been reading ahead or if, if you read ahead through this, another reason why this song is a great um, a great theme for it is that, that phrase there, and though even hell should endeavor to shake. You know, that's exactly what's going on with these false teachers. Satan is using these false teachers to try to shake the very foundation of the church, which is belief in the word of God, belief in Christ's resurrection, his death and resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, and trying to bring those things into question, trying to bring into question whether Christ will ever really return. Um, and so hell is... is working through these people. Satan is working through these people. False teachers that we see today. Satan is working through these people to try to shake the foundation of the church. But as Paul says in Romans, nothing can separate us from the from the love of Christ. Nothing at all. And he says he'll never forsake us. You know, as, as Jesus is giving his great commission to the disciples, how does he end that? He says, Behold, I am with you always even to the end of the age. And that leads into a, a great, you know, the uh, there's a great bridge section here. Age to age, he stands. He is with us. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From age to age, he stands faithful to the end. All may fade away, but he, he will remain. He will remain. What a great encouragement. And of course, it goes back into that glorious um that wonderful, uh, praise-exalting uh, chorus there. How firm our foundation, how sure our salvation. I want to ask you today, believer, do you have confidence? Do you have confidence in Christ? Confidence in God's word that it is true, that you can trust it, that you can live by it? Are you sure of salvation? Do you have confidence that the Lord's death, burial, resurrection that his death, him bearing the wrath of God, that he took on every single one of your sins and gave you his righteousness, that you would be able to stand before the throne of a holy, righteous, just God and be able to stand as an adopted son or daughter and be welcomed into that family. Is Jesus that firm foundation that you're clinging to? I'm excited to sing this this coming Sunday, and we're going to sing it several times over these next several weeks. Um, as we go through Second Peter, and I hope it will help you um, worship the Lord and apply all the things that we are learning as we go through Second Peter together. And so uh, I hope you have a great Monday and that this song will encourage you throughout your week. I'll see you again soon.